Hello, Hello. Brain Candy Podcast, episode 783, and it is now February. Woo, yeah. I don't want to be one of those people that's like, it's my birthday month. Oh my but, God, but uh, it is your birthday month. But it is my birthday month. <laughs> and uh, birthdays have become so much more fun. Like I was always the kid who was envious of the people who had summer birthdays because they all got to do the pool party. And then I was really jealous of people who had fall birthdays because then they could do a Halloween theme birthday. You know how I would love a costume theme party. And I felt like February was like, ugh. Who, that's a shitty month for a birthday. It's wow. cold. The summer you know. birthdays, we were envious of people who got to celebrate in a classroom setting. Oh, because they... Because well, you get attention that day. You do get attention, but it felt like the day where where maybe a, a parent might have shown up with cupcakes for the whole class, and mom was a working mom, single working mom, and they were, they were <laughs> not... She's not the baker. She is very good at making many other gifts. wonderful Italian meals, but not quite the baker. So yeah, it was that wasn't a big one for me where I really cared. And I don't like mm. that. Like I don't like want. The, I just want the party. So <laughs> that's all changed now that I live in a place where I get to have my favorite kind of birthday, which is your least favorite kind of day, a powder day. Oh my god! So is that yeah. what you th- uh, you won't yeah, be able to do like, that this year, will you? Uh, I'm hoping. Okay, it should be at the exact time where I am healed enough to be able to do moderate that is risky strenuous biz. activity. You're going to have to get that cleared with me before. Okay. I will. I definitely I will. Mean. We'll probably do some like tests. You know, my, my brother will probably make it, like, just probably jump on one foot for a while or something. I don't know. What if you like fall that. though and bust open your gut? Okay. Well, th- this is what well, we talked to the doctor about this. Cause Eli was like, Sarah, uh, let's stop wasting time and ask him the question you really want to ask. How long till she's skiing and snowboarding again? And he right. said, the, the good thing is- Not about like having babies or- Right. There's not a, not at all. That he can't, oh my God, get this. Nothing can go in there for 14 weeks. In there? <laughs> in there, there. You mean penises? Or fingers or tampons. <laughs> Let's or name everything that could go in. <laughs> anything you could. They were like nothing. 14 weeks? 14 weeks. Oh, boy. Isn't that like the same as having a fucking baby? I mean, that... <laughs> Do you mean the gestation period of a human? No, I mean how oh. long they will say after you have had a baby oh, before you I can like engage. I think that's longer. I think it's what? only like maybe six weeks or something. Cheesy, for... crazy, lemon squeezy. Okay. That yeah. is a long... A long time. Am I right? Uh-huh. So I'm well, shocked I won't be by doing any of that kind data. of riding for a while. So maybe riding a snowboard. I guess so. <laughs> what yes, I have to Sarah's settle on. going to be... Doing some Gosh, different our kinds of things. Know, know so much about me. <laughs> and Eli. <laughs> and Eli. In this case. Yeah. Oh. Wow. What what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. What wow. a guy. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, be careful yeah. out there. Yeah. And yeah. You know, there are a lot of ways to be intimate. So that's what I mean. You're gonna get experimental. I know. I'm looking yeah. for like nice foot massages or something. Like Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's romantic. You know, yeah. That's not where my head was. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Gotta be honest. Uh, yeah, well, I shouldn't be giving any GD advice about safety. Oh, why? We Uh-oh. had an incident <gasps> over here. No, Susie, we're going to have to get you one of those signs that says, <gasps> oh, I, no. I, oh, I, I, I <sighs> can imagine how, for those of you who can't see the video version, she has the what oh, I can only... Describe as like a cartoon <laughs> version <laughs> of totally thumb wrapping. Is. Like, you know, when you see in cartoons and they've got the throbbing thumb and they wrap it with gauze and there's a big, yeah. like, medical. It's like red comically co- big. This, gauze. Is her, this is her thumb right now, people. Uh, what on earth happened? Was this a kitchen incident? Yeah. Oh, no. And I know that you have, sh- I know you sharpen your knives on the I regular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said to Adam, you know how they say, like, the most dangerous thing in your kitchen is a dull knife. And I'm like, I beg to differ. Oh, God. Okay, please. I want to know, but I don't want to know. It's but pretty I bad. Know. Okay. Oh, Did you have stitches? No. There was nothing to stitch, really, because oh. I... <laughs> I know what you're going to say. 
It, the surface stuff is even worse. No, no. I chopped off, off the tip of my thumb and watched it roll across my oh, cutting no. board. <laughs> I, like, here's the thing, guys. I can't. I have too good of an imagination. I, I want to throw up when I picture these things. So people are like, Sarah, calm down. This is my best friend and her thumb rolling. Ac- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a true story. That's. I I can still feel it, and like when it happened, feels kind of like when you chop through a carrot. And oh, why are you just <laughs> this is why I know I could never be a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, you're too squeamish. I'm way you have the temperament, too... but <laughs> <laughs> you have the uh, morality, but just not the um not the, the stomach through. for it. Not the stomach for it. Sue's like so th- a carrot. Yeah, so then I saw it, and I, I screamed, and then I said I chopped the top of my thumb off, and then oh Lincoln screamed that scream of, like, blood curdling. Like, it was as if he cut off his. <laughs> I'm so upset that I can't plug my ears right now. I'm, like, trying to, like, <laughs> Okay, like, well, we there. can move on. No, no, I want to hear. Her. Like, it's again, I don't, but I do. So then what? You did because you can't stitch it because there's nothing to close it. Oh my it was god! You're not. Like, you're gonna have a missing chunk. You're gonna have a funny shaped thumb. Yeah, it it was sort of like the maximum amount that you could take off without going to, you know, because I'm not. It wasn't big enough to like put in a bag and like keep it and go, you know. But it was big enough where I'm like, well, there's my finger over there. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> How did you not pass out? I want to pass out right now. <laughs> um I don't know but it really bled for a long time and I'm just glad it wasn't worse and I'm also glad it was that finger because I can still type because that's oh, like the one it's, it's the, not the one you're cutting yeah. with it's, it could have been a lot worse is what I'm saying oh my god what anyway were you it sucks what um chives <laughs> Not even something right. you'd be like, oh, I can see that. Right, like an onion or something where it slipped and, oh, my God, I'm a, be, be careful out there, Suze. No kidding. Anyway, so that sucked. And Staring it's in one wonder of those things where, at like, your finger as it rolls across the floor. Well, I, do, I feel wonder about the way the human body heals itself, for sure. Like Absolutely. even the next day when I removed the stuff and I looked at it and I thought, it's amazing because as soon as you get an injury, your body starts working to heal. Yeah. And it is miraculous, really. It's really, really crazy. But because remember I read that book, it's called The Body by Bill Bryson, and it describes the process of healing. Mm-hmm. And it, it really felt like, wow, that it's, you know how people say like that kind of thing can make them like faith, believe, you know, in God yeah. and stuff, yeah. because it does feel like, how did this all? How? come together, whatever. But it's just one of those things where you wish you could go back in time and be more careful. And the regret is not pleasant. I thought you were going to say that you like did it where you sliced maybe your fingernail off or one of those, but a A whole chunk chunk of your thumb. And it was sitting over there with like the the nail still on it. Oh (laughs) my fucking god it's so gross i was in my mind picturing just the, uh, nope it's even further than i thought it was oh, yeah yeah i, I, I was can't be a that parent like, oh, that's my nail could you imagine this with a child <laughs> it would be so much worse if it were lincoln i would be much more upset so oh, for fuck's sake yeah anyway yeah like i want to cry for you right now because i'm like imagining your pain and what that would and the, the moment where you are deciding do we put it on ice that there's enough yeah. of it to do that right yeah we're gonna have to get you one of those signs that says like zero days since last accident <laughs> 20 days since last I accident know. and just like really try to it's a weird thing to throw away a body part too like to toss it in the garbage <laughs> with the rest of the chives <laughs> i know weird right anyway. somehow it feels like at a certain <laughs> Where's the line? Because at a certain point, it becomes a crime, doesn't it? <laughs> For real. And like, if it's like disposing of your own, bo- I have questions about. I know. That. Yeah, it's weird. 
I hope you never have to go through this. Can you dispose of body parts of your own? Yeah, if you like you cut can. a finger off, I think you and... can toss it. Okay. I and... just hope it grows back, and I'll tell you what is growing back. <laughs> That's my hair, <laughs> thanks to Nutrafol. <laughs> I feel like the stress and the anxiety of even thinking about these kind of accidents is enough to make my hair fall out. <laughs> so I know, I know, but for real, like whenever. I had the hair accident of 2022. Yes. Um, it does feel dramatic because it, well, it you is. know how it, long it takes for hair to grow back. So if you have thinning or you would like to experience a full head of hair like I am now, mm-hmm. look at that. Look, yeah. that's a lot of hair I, up there. So I remember what that's like. I see the before and after. Yeah. That is really amazing. And I really notice it, uh, especially on the side of my temples right here. Mm-hmm. That's the part where it's thinner, the, like, you know, it just yeah. thinned out a little. And I know. Yeah. To Neutrophil- get more scalp coverage. So it, yeah, it's the number one uh, dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Start your hair growth journey today by taking Nutrafol's hair wellness quiz and get your personalized hair health plan today. For limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping at Nutrafol.com slash quiz. When you enter the promo code Brain Candy, take the quiz and get started on reaching your hair wellness goals with Nutrafol today. Nutrafol.com, spelled N U T R A F O L.com slash quiz, promo code Brain Candy. That's Nutrafol.com slash quiz, promo code Brain Candy. First of all, we, you and I talked about the documentary that was coming out called Subject that was about like oh, yeah. people that have been in documentaries. Yes, I want to see this. It's on. Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah, I got to write this down. I had to rent it. Like, you can't stream it for free, I don't think. Okay. Um, but, yeah, Prime Video, it's called Subject, and it's about people who have been in um, documentaries and w- the sort of ethical questions that documentarians should be asking. And so they covered, like, Capturing the Freedmen's. Oh, um, yes. Wolfpack. Hoop Dreams, some of the really big documentaries that have come out. And so then they're the subjects of them have become well known or like, you know, it changed their life to be right. a part of it. It it did remind me of how we talk about how like when you were cast on Road Rules or Real World, you're going into it as one person and mm. then that person is altered because of their participation in the thing. You so. always say the things that I want to say in such a good way. Like I like that oh, like thank it you. one that That's was really nice. like I was having a conversation just the other day trying to explain all of that. It probably took me 30 sentences to do it. <laughs> and that is well. it. You go in one way and you come out right changed because of that experience. And that's such a strange thing that the very thing that's uh, you know portraying who you are then alters that identity. Yeah. That's that's fascinating to me really because is. we've lived it. And also like documentaries are so popular now that there's so many right. people that are being followed and and they're still having to sort of rely on the filmmaker to tell the story reliably. Right. And I do think it's similar to what we've experienced where it's all the bad and none of the good where this doesn't come with a, a big paycheck or any sort of like job opportunities or or yeah social i don't know yeah right upward movement <laughs> but uh, yeah it's it's almost the opposite it's a more more people critical of i don't know actions behaviors things that have happened yeah and then you become not just the subject of the film but just the subject of opinions of the people that watch it too. Yes. Yes. And that's strange. Yep. Um, Ooh, and it gosh. didn't really, I don't think it took like a hard position about like, this is wrong and this is right. And this is how it should be yeah. done. But it just raised questions. Like I'm unsure of my opinion about this, hmm. but there's often been this debate about whether documentary filmmakers should pay the subjects. So, Oh, 
It does change people's behavior, though. So, the yeah, on one side, there's this idea that it would um, affect the plot or the narrative yeah. or whatever. It could, like, bastardize it in a way, you know? But then there's this weirdness about, like, well, you're asking people to work for free then. Right. And a lot of times documentary subjects are already vulnerable and exploited in other ways. That's why maybe they're participating, yeah, like right. the wolf pack guys right, or whoever. And so, like, that seems wrong, too, to not pay them for their work. Yeah. What, it, what about something where it, it came after the release mm. or the filming? And release of the yeah, they did say that the documentarians that made Hoop Dreams, mm -hmm. which followed these um, inner city kids who had dreams of playing basketball, and they after the film became a huge success and mm -hmm. it did generate a lot of revenue, the filmmakers split it with anybody that had a speaking part in the oh, documentary. That's great. So yeah. they distributed it, however way. And then it changed those people's lives, you know. I they, like that. Yeah, they were compensated, but perhaps didn't affect the way that they yeah. behaved. Because I don't know if they knew that going in. Right. Or whether they found out later. But yeah, that like seems that, fair. That, that seems very fair. Because they make a ton of money now. It's not like the olden days where it was like on PBS for one night or whatever. Right. These are yeah. the number one most streamed things on Netflix or, you know, whatever. Like mm -hmm. Tinder Swindler, please. <laughs> right and it's funny that like they're making money off a show but people taking advantage of you making money that's the thing like mm -hmm. these people get sort of like re-exploited right in a way but people yeah. i think there is this urge in most people mm -hmm. to tell their story people want to be seen mm -hmm. and that by participating they feel like it's almost like making a mark in the world you matter and, and that has value to some people yeah, and then, you know, like you bring the awareness and attention to maybe somebody who wasn't going to get that in any other way. Well, and we like to imagine that these documentarians are just this artists. Like, we, we think of them differently than we think of, like, a director of a normal film. Right, right. You know, you think of them as just, like, they're sort they're of telling tell a story. And they're, yeah, they're yes, storytellers yes. and they just like believe in the film and they'll yeah. do it for like $3. Right. But they have an incentive to make it click, click baity too in the same way that MTV does really. Yeah, especially now, especially with the style of documentary that's really popular. Oh, they yeah. They feel You need very, a big jinx yes, moment. Yes. Oh, he's confessing on a hot mic. Yeah, or the uh, I, I see a lot of documentaries do this half scripted, half documentary style, um, like the social like dilemma. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where they have a family kind of playing out these scenes yeah. of interacting with technology and how it's affecting their relationships mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and simultaneously interviewing experts and. Yeah going through the history. Yeah, and, they, like, blur the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it does feel very, uh, like, music video, like, commercial, fast-paced, you know, yeah. graphics and I mean, most people kind of delineate between, like, before Super Size Me yes. and after Super Size Me. <laughs> that was sort yeah, of a big the moment. the other one was, I like, Bowling for yeah. Columbine. Uh -huh. And, like, Michael Moore, I would throw him yeah. in that. In that category yeah. of people who changed yeah. the way we do it. And I'm glad. I'm so glad the genre yeah. is popular and there's so many great films being made. But I think this film was great because it was asking the questions. It was probably time to ask yeah. in like a bigger way. I'm sure a lot of the people that participate in these films need some therapy afterwards. And I would suggest to them to maybe try BetterHelp because BetterHelp sponsors our show and we love yes. them. Yes. Let me tell you, getting a therapist is a hard thing to do. Sometimes you have to, not sometimes, most often, you have to jump through a lot of hoops to do it. Not with BetterHelp. Yeah. I am so happy with the therapist that I have on there and it's just been great. Yeah. It, they have uh, therapists that specialize in whatever it is that ails you or worries you or 
is stressing you out and you can pick amongst them and, and specify what you are interested in. And it's entirely online. So it's convenient. You don't have to worry about finding your way anywhere and you can suit it to your schedule. So it's flexible. Become your own soulmate. Ooh, I like that idea. Yes. Uh, whether you're looking for one or not, visit betterhelp.com slash brain candy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash brain candy. Oh, I get it. Cause it's, you know, it's February. People are thinking about relationships. Oh, it's yes. that time. Of the year. Yeah, you got to love yourself first. Well, that's the truth. Yeah. Everyone else is questionable at best. <laughs> Um, okay. So that was good. I would recommend that. Maybe it'll be a candy club pick sometime. It would be fun to do that. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Okay. There was I think this... that's just like the responsible thing to do as a club. I know. That was, watches documentaries. Yeah. And since we've watched so many of the ones that they talk about in, in the movie, it would be fun. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Um, okay. Oh, this was funny to me. I mean, this is just a little something, but it made me laugh. Did you read about how um, ESPN got caught in like a scheme to get their hosts um, Emmys? <laughs> what? This is cracking Wait, me up. This is funny because don't I, I feel like is it everybody trying to get an Emmy? Like, what's the difference between being in a yeah. scheme to get one and just <laughs> trying real hard? Yeah. Okay. The scheme was that. If a show wins in the certain category, the the production staff gets the Emmy, but the hosts mm. don't. If you the host wants an Emmy, they have to win in like the host category. Host, right, right, right. Because they're not the ones making the show and producing. Yeah, and picking it's a the separate show. like right. whole standard and skill set or whatever, and so they are separate. Yeah. But ESPN cooked up this plan where like whenever they would apply or whatever the word is where you apply for an Emmy yeah, like, <laughs> to be yeah, considered. Yeah. Um, you fill out like who's on the crew. And so they'd list all these names and then they would include some made up names. And then when they won, they would scrub out those names and re-engrave these GD Emmys with like the act, the host's names. So if like the host's name was Sarah Rice, they would yeah. put like Sarah Ronalds and then they would just have to like get rid of the half of that <laughs> second word and redo it like before they made and and i don't know do they engrave it or what yeah they engrave the so, emmys engrave them and send them to espn and then espn and then they would remove wh the one what? they're engraving and re-engrave them please that <laughs> engrave. i that is <laughs> this really supports my argument of how Men are little whiny babies. That I thought the same thing. This is this is no this woman really, was involved in this. This really supports how I say that if you want to see how men are more dramatic than women, yeah. all you have to do is watch Sports Center. Yes, like and their all those egos guys are the morning, so fragile, and they're all yelling at each other, and they're all worked up about you know who Dumb tackled. Stuff. Who, d yes, right. Right. For real. I, I, this is. It's so great. And so It's fun. the ultimate participation trophy. Yeah, right. I was just going to say, these are all the same people guaranteed that are like, we don't like that there are participation right. trophies. You, you have to earn it. Yes. Unless the you whole... are a male host of a ESPN sports show, the you little freaking babies. Is designed around what? competition. That is the whole point of oh, what ESPN what? is. Susie, yeah, this is so great. In probably my top ten <laughs> now favorite controversial television moments because of mm -hmm. how, uh, like, what this actually means and yeah. what this represents, and like the pettiness, yeah, and the fragility of these <sighs> grown ass men. Oh my who god. Are fine. So Why would great. you even want that? I wouldn't even want an Emmy that really wasn't my Emmy. Me either. That's what I'm saying. Is like we all know who. I'm trying to think of like a good analogy for what this is like, but this is just. Oh, it's so funny to me that yeah. they would need it erased. I was thinking maybe they would submit it, and then and then when I don't know the Emmys are finalizing like. 
you know, make sure we got all the spelling right. And then they put it in there. But Mm -mm. this is a um, a aftermarket parts going on. (laughs) Totally. That Emmy. Which makes it null and void. I don't even think they really got in trouble, though, either, because they just had to give back, like, a bunch of Emmys that were not real people. Like, there were 37 of these trophies that they required them to return. Oh, my, but, like, I have to know fun. who the people are. And can you imagine being on that crew and being like, oh, God, we got it. We got to hang on. It'll take a little while to get ours. Yeah, yours because needed some add. extra special. And then whose house do you think it goes to? Not the people who really deserve it. Probably that host. <laughs> I'm going to go to all the trouble to faking the name on there. Or do they keep them at the office? Where do they keep well, those? I think that they give to distribute them. I think so. Because people would want them, you know, if you won an Emmy and had your name on it. Yeah. So the person who should be receiving that. It's not existent. There is is no one. So they would do the whole crew and then just add like three names to the list of names that don't exist. Right. And then would re-engrave it with the host name. So nobody lost, like got ripped off okay but if you so say it's brain candy and Uh, it's it's the producers who are supposed to win the yeah they would get them too oh so they get them too yeah because you would turn in a list so they put multiple emmy like if if a whole crew wins each person on that crew gets their own yeah oh i didn't even know that's how it worked i always thought that they i don't know they got to like Rock, paper, scissors for it. Or like, <laughs> or keep I don't it know. in the studio or something. Yeah. I ha- yeah. Wow. News to no. me. No idea so how So let's Emmys say there's work. 30 people on the crew and two hosts. Then they would write up 32 names. And then okay. the last two were just like, you know, John Smith. Yeah. I, I got that, but I didn't know that it, that that's how many. Man, they got to make a fuck ton of I those know. Emmys. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're not that special. There's some company that is staying in business because of. Of just that. Really fancy paperweights. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now I their scheme has those. been exposed. Wow. That and is it's great. Super funny. That is such that what a treat. <laughs> I'm gonna drop that at the Super Bowl party. For real. Imagine what a big deal it would have been had like Barbara Walters or Oprah done that. That's all anyone would talk about. And you they hadn't wouldn't even have heard jobs about this afterwards. I know. They'd be canceled for having my like, oh bad my God. characters. I can't wait to learn who it is. Okay. Oh, I'm falling apart over here. Um, yes. I'll tell you what everyone does deserve, though, and that is to get financial freedom through rocket money, which I love. Absolutely. And is so empowering and awesome because rocket money helps you figure out where your money's going and then get rid of the expenses that are unnecessary or you didn't even realize, like if you had a, a streaming service that you didn't yep. want or a magazine subscription, you're like, I don't even read that. Yep. So they tell you, here's what your subscriptions are. If you don't want them, we'll cancel them for you. And if this bill seems high, they'll negotiate it down on your behalf. I love it. Don't even have to do anything. They've saved me hundreds of dollars. And the pain of being on a telephone, which I do not ever want to be. No. Never, ever, ever. I don't even like <laughs> asking people for things. So I don't want to be like, oh, hi, excuse me. Can you make Sorry can, to bother I want to pay less money. I'm not having that <laughs> conversation. Rocket Money is going to do that. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash candy. That's rocketmoney.com slash brain candy, rocketmoney.com slash brain candy. One of my yeah. favorites. I always yeah. tell people that. It's one of my yeah, favorite Yeah, it really partners. is. All right, moving on. That was fun. Um, all right. I have been wanting to tell you about this for a while, but I'm always hesitant because I'm like, is this a good story or is it just Yep, me? those are always the stories that are really good. That Every <laughs> time I, that happens, you always say that about ones that I've hold, held on to. Okay. Well, this one was in the new, uh, Washington Post, and it's uh, it was about the high stakes art of naming new apartment buildings. Oh. And I just found it so funny because I obviously we all know that apartment buildings can have names, but I certainly never thought about the process involved. I definitely think about how 
uh, the name of an apartment sets the tone for <laughs> the kind of people who will live there, the yeah, kind of vibe totally. they're looking for. There are always ones. Oh, there's there's one on the street that I I drive down to get to my studio, and it's called the Roost or something like that. Come on, and I'm like terrible fucking <laughs> name and then they even did i'll take a picture of it and and send it to you there's a, a picture of i want to say it's of a rooster in one of the o's so then it, oh, it looks God. like it's i at when i first saw it i was like does that say roast or what i i couldn't right i'm like terrible these people clearly didn't read this article so <laughs> right or maybe that's the clientele they were looking for i don't know who that would be but- chickens Right, like people that love chickens. <laughs> Quasi homesteaders. Right. Okay, so they apparently spend a ton of money on buying the naming service. So like, you know, an advertising agency or whatever mm-hmm. will be hired for like between five and fifty thousand dollars to come up with like the perfect name. And we're in the wrong business. I mean my friend, he's a writer, and he was once hired by a company to name their beer, like a beer line that they were making. And he came up with all these names. I thought they were all great, and they turned them all down. Oh, they wow. had something to say about each one. And you just think, like, it, why don't they just pick one then? Like, yeah. it's so strange to me. I've seen these kind of pitches that they do or these packets they put together yeah. in that naming process. Yeah. And they give you like a hundred pages on, you know, Why what it's... this means and and the the way it's perceived and the other ways that people interpret these mis- like things that are so far reaching. Yeah. And they always look like it could sound like yeah. On. Give me a fucking break. We're very busy out here. We're right. not thinking like about this, it. This the the dot over the I represents right. the world and the unity of all <laughs> the people. And you're like, it's yeah, a fucking it dot over not. the eye. Relax. <laughs> yeah. It could be live or it could be live. And it could be like shows that it's like hi. It, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yes. These companies will ask all these questions of like the apartment complexes whoever owns it and they'll be like, what kind of music do you expect to hear in the lobby? And like, what kind of person do you think would live here? And so then like this one example they did, they said, we joked one day that this would be where Frasier Crane would live and said that they called it the Frasier. And, you know, like they think who, who would want to live here? We want like a high end, we want an elegant person. I could have fucking done that for that. Like, that's what I mean. I, in the elevator ride from one floor to the next, I could have had a, a good, like, well, we could have come up with a name. One time we were talking about a certain someone who writes poetry, and Sarah was like, I could do that. And she wrote a poem right then, yeah, in that moment. moment. I'm, I'm good. On you, fly. you should actually maybe do this for a it's, living. It's the place where an ADHD brain thrives. Oh, you yeah. want me to th- I, come up with relation, like, how, mm-hmm. what this, yeah, got it, done. I'll do that. This one it says, they decided because they wanted elegance, they were going to call it the signet, like the engraved ring. Yeah. But then they they also considered a homophone, which is with a C and a Y, and then it, that means a young swan because they talked about graceful animals. What? And also, I don't like that name. <laughs> the signet. Well, maybe no. you weren't their target. I definitely not. That's I. That's a person who has season tickets to the opera, or the ballet. They claim, yeah, they claim that it's one of the most difficult parts of the whole process and it has to be memorable, but broadly appealing, distinctive, yet easy to say and spell. Mm -hmm. You need to ensure that Googling the name will bring people directly to your website. Oh, and Signet was going to do that? Right. Please. Come on now. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Bring them directly to your website. Yeah. Just... Just like there's naming trends for restaurants that yeah. right now two word monikers connected by a plus sign were popular, you know, for yeah. restaurants. Um, yeah. So too have particular conventions fallen in and out of favor in real estate. 
There are so many communi- communities named something ranch or something farm. We don't need any more of those. So like right. it reminds me of Elf whenever they were trying to think of the next children's book and that yeah. they had that little person yes. come in and he has all these like ideas and he's like, no, they bruised, peaches bruised too easily or whatever. <laughs> like they come up with all this stuff that's just it's made ridiculous. up. Ridiculous. Totally made up. Like when I got to the end of the article, though, it was sort of like, okay, so this is how we think about it. We you, avoid words like plantation. Yeah, for and, goodness sakes. <laughs> and any p- name of a person who owned a lot of land in the 1700s, yeah. good rule of thumb. Very rule good. of thumb. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I, it's <sighs> very hard for me to not giggle every time I see you Ugh. using it. Well, now I'm going to giggle because of the way you... <laughs> accurately pointed out that it's like a cartoon. It is a cartoon. When they smash their thumb with like a hammer. Boom, 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 like throbbing. (laughs) But at the end of the article, it was sort of like, but usually it just comes down to like whatever the developer likes best. It's so subjective. It really is. That's why what you're really paying for is that somebody to sell you on yeah, whatever their idea they love is. A story. And they it, the better they sell you on it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you yes. They want a story of why it's called that. They and, should save their money cuz nobody cares. I'm telling yeah. you. Did did you see the I think it 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 was put on the internet. I this was a couple years ago, but Pepsi did a rebrand and the company that did the rebrand for Pepsi came out with this marketing the packet this the, you know, explanation of of why they're doing everything. Yeah. You've never heard something that's so far-reaching and For real. ridiculous. I'll find it and and text it to you. See, it they're is all making so it, it up. I wish oh, they would just admit 100%. it. One hundred percent, and it cost them millions. I think this it was like a two million dollar job or something. So it was like the company said, "Oh fuck, we got to give them two million dollars worth of, you know, <laughs> totally something. We yeah. can't just like give them this and be like, yeah, our guy, our our intern thought of it." The end. That's not two million. So let's give them a hundred pages of this. That's like yeah, a slide yes. PowerPoint of bullshit. Yeah, it's very funny and totally worth the 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 read. I also read it was either Esquire or GQ, but it was the article about how they come up with the names for cannabis uh, strains. Oh. You know, oh, like that's when you go very funny. They all are so ridiculous. Yeah, this so is this... Granddaddy Purple Kush. This is <laughs> Granddaddy. What the fuck? Yes, and so like this writer wanted to see how they were doing it because they seem so funny and it's sometimes you just think, how in the world did they land on this name? And they all sat around and did dope. I mean, they... Yeah, I don't don't imagine why that would be... They would do anything else. To well, they would. Those. They first they sm- it's like wine. Like they yeah. smelled it and said what notes they were picking up, and then they. Well, the reason why it would not be like anything else is because once you smoke it, then you're high, right? And so, like, then you're picking a name under the influence of yes. the thing, and so it just went real downhill real fast. Like it started really good, <laughs> yeah. Where they were coming up with some really clever stuff. And then it got to where they thought the stuff they were coming up with was very clever because they were high. Exactly. But it was like stupid. Yeah, they definitely need to to quit it with that. They're ridiculous. And then they have to look in like Leafly's uh, database yes. and make sure there's not another like ice yes. cream cone banana. I have used Leafly as a resource before. Yeah. Yeah. They'll yeah. also rank all of them on on what the – negative side effects are. So I find the ones that don't cause anxiety or anything like that. And they're very specific like kinds that you can use to. Yeah. They take it seriously. These guys. Yeah. Yeah. And gals. But like sometimes a little too seriously. It's like, <laughs> come on. Well, I think that's what we're noticing. Yeah. People are just wanting to make it seem like they're worth something. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's see. I'm trying to decide. I don't know. I watched this really sweet documentary also on Prime Video about Highlights Magazine. Oh, I love Highlights Magazine. It's so great. You would, would love it, it. It probably wouldn't surprise anybody if I said, like, I have happen to have a subscription. They'd be like, yeah, that tracks. Like, I don't. But Did you like, ever uh, have one? No. I, I, no. You know, I may have had the trial, like, six months. I don't ever remember having. A trial. Uh, 
And then Rocket delivered. Money canceled it after yeah, it started probably. charging you. No, I had a different one that my grandma subscribed me to called Ranger Rick. Oh my that gosh, was the National Geographics for kids. It was like the little kid, mm-hmm. that same kind of highlights yeah. thing. And so I had that, but yeah. I loved those magazines and I definitely stole them from the doctor's office before. Right. That's their big moneymaker is um, dentists and doctors that yeah. want them for the waiting room. Um, but it was fascinating. I think it was from 2018 and they were, they were chronicling the creation of their 70th anniversary uh, issue. But it was just seventieth cor- anniversary. No, yeah, shit, man, they've been out for a while. Yeah, and they, you know, told the story of how it was created and how it was family run still, and um, just it's just extraordinary the care that is put into something that really you just would never know intuitively. Yeah. Like this took they took it take nine months to make one issue. You know what? This is ringing a bell. Did you I watch? feel like I maybe have seen this. Oh my gosh! It didn't have as much of an effect on no, you. No, it probably did because when I when you I I have this image in my head of all of them sitting in a room together, discussing like the, and then there was some kind of, is it going to come out yet? Is it going to get renewed? Thing maybe I oh. I'll have to revisit that to see if I want. Well, it's very sweet and very um. You do get the sense of like, wow, it's almost like the good news movement kind of thing yes. where you're just like, these people are just diligently working and trying to educate kids yes. and it's probably thankless, but they were like considering every detail, what colors we're going to include, what font, what recipe that for pizza or whatever they put in there is like the biggest deal. And I don't it's know, man. really sweet. It is sweet. And the yeah. kids that write in. Here was, I forget the exact number, but they were saying, you know, they get however many letters a month. 90% of them are from girls. <laughs> and I thought that was very interesting. That is a huge difference. Yeah. And well, maybe it has to do with that age and... But they do from, I forget, I think they said four till yeah. 12. It was a huge age range, huh. too, that they aim to meet. And because their rule is that they have to have equal mm-hmm. uh, representation for girls and boys, pretty much any boy that's writing a letter <laughs> is getting the darn thing in the uh, magazine, uh, oh which annoys gosh. me. Yeah. Because... That's their policy is it has to be equal regardless. So like a lot of times it's like, this isn't even that good. Oh gosh, or like artwork stack or little girl papers that are. That are excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So anyway, if you're into that sort of thing, it's on. I really want to know why the boy, there's such a difference in gender. And, and because yeah. then I think if you were to look at the people who write in to papers and and magazines that are i don't know for adults yeah you would find more males writing i think so like letters to the editor yes well actually yes yeah i i think there's probably a lot of and i wonder if the little girls are writing in like what is the subject matter is it like i love your magazine so much or are there questions that they're answering yeah, something like that versus you know. Well, and they said you know they a lot of them send in artwork and that so that you only get a few boys doing it, and then a lot of the ones that they send in are like fucking guns or I can imagine you, they can't include I know exactly them. Exactly what they are, yeah. Right, so violence yeah. and aggressive and stuff like that. Always but. a gun with those little bullets, like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yeah. So it's fascinating sociological information because that is a huge difference 90 percent versus 10 percent. very big very sweet though and keep up the good work to the highlights people man yeah did you have a subscription to that no man that's for like rich kids i thought yeah i remember one time in ninth grade i was sitting behind this kid in class and i was just joking i almost said jagging uh (laughs) i was just joking with him and i was like hey hey andrew do, do you get highlights? And I meant in his hair, but he goes, 
oh yeah, I just renewed my subscription. <laughs> like he was all mad that I was <laughs> implying that a ninth grader would get Highlights Magazine. That's a great mix up. <laughs> I laughed so hard. I love that. And that he has more of a relationship with right. Highlights the Magazine than he does with right. Highlights and Hair, knowing oh, yeah, what that is. I just is. renewed my oh, subscription. Yeah. Really? Like, I'm late or hair, man. It's rare. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Yeah, I want to, I, I have to go back and, and see it. It sounds so familiar. I must, I don't know, watched a preview for it or something. Yeah, like that. maybe. Yeah. I okay. Love it. Uh, last thing I will t- discuss before we leave. Um, I was reading about how hobbies changed the home huh. and, I thought it was so interesting because they were talking about how women and girls are discouraged from doing any hobbies that are like dangerous or noisy or messy Hmm. or even like scientific really. Right. But boys and men are directed in that way, whether it's like photography or chemistry sets and rockets and things like that. Get hammers. Yeah. And so eventually they started including like sections of the house just for boys and men to have hobbies like basements and sheds and workshops Uh became like standardized and the hobbies of men like couldn't be in like the regular house because they were disgusting. Mm -hmm. And so they had these special places in the home and like before central heating, everyone used to hang out in the kitchen and then, cause that was the only room that was, hot enough, warm enough. Yeah. And then once central heating came, like the basement became functional and stuff. So like men got all this new space and women were just still stuck in the kitchen. That's <laughs> like, interesting. I never thought about like how we do have designated places in the house for those kind of activities. And maybe it's just like, and the like, garage just happens to know. be where all those things are, but but also like the man cave whole yeah. thing. Yeah, it's like wh- where is the woman woman's spot? Yeah, I w- I'm going to the put tub? up a yeah. That's yes. like my equivalent. It really is. But yeah. I I'm going to make an argument for why this is a thing. Okay. So when men and women are. Uh, or I should say what men and women need to uh, de-stress and like activate that parasympathetic nervous system and like feel better is different. And usually women will need connection and will need social interaction and will need to like talk about things to feel better and to kind of calm down. Who and do men? Women. Yeah, women. Okay. And men, in order to, like, for, like, their hormones to kind of, like, rebalance and, and, you know, (laughs) after a fight or something, need isolation. Okay. So So this is kind of the argument for what, like, maybe where, or why these man caves kind of, or these spaces Mm -hmm. are are ones where men go to kind of hide out because that's kind of what they need. And this is usually after a fight where women are like, I want to talk about it. And the man is like, "Mm, no, I need, I need space. I need time. That's how they, and then after emotions are, are, you know, come down and after those hormones get all like balanced out again and feeling more regulated theory. this is this is the article is just like yeah because their stuff stinks and yeah is this loud. is what I my supervisor told me this in uh, in therapy in when I was in grad school. Hmm. Well, yeah. I did find it funny too though that like they did a poll you know in the first half of the twentieth century about hobbies and that boys would say things like you know gun collecting and audio whatever. Yeah. And then the girls would say knitting and rearranging furniture. And I was like, that is embarrassing. We're yeah, just like moving. you are stuck in the house. The chairs on the Titanic. Over that here. is exactly what is happening. Yeah. I mean, that's changing though. And you yeah. know what I see now is this. Uh, they would just call it something other than rearrange. They'd call it like interior design instead of rearranging yeah. the furniture. Yeah. 
You mean if men did it? No. Or, no, like if or women were now. pulled now, yeah. Oh, absolutely. 100% they would. You know, I also see this boom in people who want are interested in like repurposing clothes. And I'm very excited about yeah, this. I'm seeing this trend in like the younger kids on TikTok, like, t- like going to the thrift store, wherever, or Salvation Army and getting clothes that, I don't know, look totally different and then sewing them and, and like, yeah, re reimagining. Yes. Reimagining like, like upcycling. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Upcycling to I hope make that- something totally new. And I think that they're good because everybody's like fast fashion is terrible and not everybody, Sarah. That's the problem. Like oh, okay. the there's a vocal minority that are described that I would describe like you're saying, but most people are buying three dollar shirts from Shine. Oh my god! And all those other places. Stop doing that. Stop. Like for real, people. I really want you to think <laughs> about this. It's a big problem. <laughs> it is. I know. And I know. I. I'm. I. Have I was there. I filled up my whole cart and I was like, this is so much cheaper. I can get 20 items for the same price as one of the thing that it is garbage. And garbage. I don't know why people destroying like destroying the plant and it is not supporting people being treated fairly or ethically. <laughs> Ugh. It just I I can't go back. I can't. I gotta hold myself to a higher standard now because I know things. So. I know, but yeah. I hope, well, I hope it does spread and I hope it becomes most people because it, well, it will eventually out of necessity. Yeah. So, cause you can't do this forever. Yeah. And you know, uh, another thing on that hobbies, cause uh, what I did see after the pandemic is a boom of, uh, women in like construction, like they're doing more like fix it stuff around the house. Well, I think he, they okay, got real but- restless, restless, rest, restless. I trouble with that one word for all of a sudden. Restless what, and... Uh, uh, what annoyed me, though, about the article was that at the, the end, and it was based on a, um, a scholar last name Maines who had written a book about it, but the the article sort of ended by saying, like, we, we should encourage, you know, girls to have hobbies that are stinky and loud and yeah. dangerous, too. And I'm like, okay, fine, but why aren't you encouraging men to get their asses in the kitchen Right. And make me a sandwich. <laughs> it's always like this where they're like, you should, you know, remove certain words from your emails. Like just, you know, right. I was just checking it. Like Maybe we're supposed to talk add. like men. Right. Why don't we ask them to be a little more yeah. polite, Sarah? Yeah. That's what I want I do know. have a, a man who gets in the kitchen and makes me more than just a sandwich. And so, you know, I, I can't say that. Uh, you know, I have that same problem. He's very in touch with his feminine side, so I'm lucky in that way. Yeah, but I just feel like maybe encouraging yes. the collective would be great. Absolutely. Ma'am. Everybody, and yeah, there's, there. I saw a little boy who's an amazing knitter, and they did a whole, you did? like, one of those 60-second 60 sec, 60 doc, mm-hmm. like, little clip things on him. And he's just so adorable and he loves knitting and he wants to be a surgeon when he grows up. And he said being really good at knitting is helping train the muscles in his hand to be a surgeon. Wow. This guy's got a plan. Yeah. He was so cute. Oh, Oh, man. Well, let's wind it down. I could have used a surgeon the other day. Oh, my God. I will never forget. I have created now my own visual of, you know that song? Uh, uh, on top of a smoky, yeah. I'll cover, I lost my poor meatball. I, I, I imagine your off the table finger rolling the off like like that. It was for real, like that office scene when there's a fire and they like throw that cat into the ceiling and stuff. Yes. That's what my yes. kitchen was like when this happened. Because like I'm, you know, trying to stop oh the bleeding God. and find it, whatever. And Lincoln screaming like Adam had to direct his attention to oh. Lincoln, right? Because he was losing his marbles. He's going to have a meltdown. You're going to have two injured like, people. It's happening. It's, it's happening. happening. It's happening. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm so anyway. sorry. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you didn't have to. I, I, I'm glad you didn't chop off more. Yeah, but it could have been worse. Oh, God. Um, it's Sarah's birthday month, and that's exciting. We'll see what what her birthday brings, powder yeah. or no powder. Oh, powder. Um. 
subject documentary was really yes. good. Maybe it'll be a candy club pick. ESPN is in the penalty box. <laughs> That's what I the know. Red, red card. <laughs> yeah, red card. Yeah. What are you doing? Flag on the play. I would love to. I don't know how long they got away with it. So maybe that 37. Yeah, I like really want to know. It's like maybe the same four guys that they <laughs> yeah. keep on having to be like, You're like doing tons great. of Emmys. Oh, my God. You know? Um, oh, if so you're naming great. apartments or cannabis, you might as well just pick whatever because yeah. nobody cares. Right. <laughs> and you get the gist. Um, thank you, as always, for using our codes and leaving nice I used reviews. one just this morning. What would you buy? Some stuff. I bought a caraway pan. Oh, I, I'm telling you because right pan. before we started, she said she was got the frying pan. It will change your whole life. I'm so life. excited. I know. Well, I already have the Dutch oven, and so now I I got. It's unbelievable. Like, the eggs wait. just slide all over. It's like slippery. Right. Anyway. Yeah. We'll see you next time, everybody. <laughs>